The following is a paid program for Rental Housing Network. Good afternoon. I'm Sandy Adams, and this is the Rental Housing Network Show. Rental Housing Network is a member-based information center that provides rental owners, agents, managers with the resources that they need to properly manage their rental properties, such as forms, informational guides, access to credit reports, operational advice, classes and events. For a list of what Rental Housing Network has to offer, visit our website at rentalhousingnetwork.com. Today, my guest is Jindo Lee from Happy Inspector. Thanks for being here. Not a problem. I saw a presentation that you guys made a few uh, months ago, and so I thought that it would be interesting to have you come in and talk about the things in your presentation. You don't have your PowerPoint, but we'll work around it. Sure. And what the uh, presentation was about is the new apps that are available to business owners, not just property management companies, but to business owners in general, and some of these would be good for individuals. Yeah, exactly. So I think like what we found was um, as a being a tech company, we use a lot of tools to help us in our daily lives. And, you know, what we found is a lot of our customers were using, could use these tools and were using these tools. But on top of that, you know, the, I guess these tech tools could be applied across different industries or anyone that really wants to increase their productivity. Okay, so we'll just start down the line and talk about some of these new apps. The first one is Reportive. Mm-hmm. Reportive. Okay. So with Reportive, when you get an email from someone, you can see their personal information? Yeah. So what happens is, you know, you have this problem where, for example, you want to look for someone's email address or if you're like, let's say hiring someone or um, just finding anything about a new tenant, for example, what you can do is you install this plugin into Gmail or Chrome. And when, as soon as you type in the person's email address and you roll over it and hover over it, you can start, it starts to bring in their social media profiles, like their Facebook, LinkedIn, um, their Gmail profiles. So essentially you have all the information you need to find out what, what you want to find out about that person. So I guess employers could use that. Employ, um, yeah, we, we use it when we're working with new, new customers or clients. Um, when, we, when I hire, I use this as well. Employ it, so employers can definitely use it. Did you report of me when I called you? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so you found out where I was. That seems a little... Creepy. Creepy, a little <laughs> over the top to me. Yeah, it, it kind of is. Um, you know, in this day and age, like as soon as you have any of your information on the in- interwebs, then essentially that's open, opening it up to everyone to see, right? It's pretty much public information it, is what you're is. saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So because basically they're just grabbing that public information. Yes, correct. So if you've never used your email address for Facebook, for example, then that won't be pulled in. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. But if you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever, it's going to show that. It will show it will show. Yeah, it will show up. With just your email address. With just that one email address, we can pull up any information. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, for anyone interested in that um, app, it's at Mm reportive.com. Correct. Okay. So the next one is called Yesware. And that's an email for tracking salespeople. Yeah. So this, so have you ever had the problem when you sent someone an email, but you didn't know if they opened the email or not? Yes. You used to be able to tell that with the receipts, right? Uh, read receipts. Yes. But people will just go, no, I didn't re- read it. And then you can't find out. So what Yesware does, um, so there's, co- Yesware is a company that does it. HubSpot, there's, uh, they have a product called Signals. And it essentially does the same thing. So if I send you an email with Yesware, when you open it, it actually tells me that Sandy opened it two minutes ago. So you not only do you know that they opened it, you know when they opened it. You know when they opened it. And if you have a link in there, it actually tracks the click on the link. Oh. So how do you apply it to a, a landlord or owner? Um, let's say you're sending off a contract um, or an email to say, hey, your inspection reports are, are, you know, have been completed. When they open it, they click on it. You can actually track when they've done it. Well, I could see that maybe coming in handy too with tenants. If you send them a notice, you know, and... Um, you just want to tell them, you know, that, um, you know, hey, we got cited because you left your garbage on the front porch or something. Exactly. And, uh, you know, they can't say they didn't get it, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Because. Well, you have proof. <laughs> that it was open. So mm-hmm. not only do you have your date and time that you sent the notice, but you also have proof that they opened, opened it. Opened it, yeah. 
So that's that's an interesting one. Okay. Yeah. And you can what, the other cool thing about these things, you can create templates within these um, this software, right? So if there's something that you always send out, maybe you want to send out to 30 people over the next six months or something, you can create a template and reuse that template. So you don't have to um, retype everything again. So and, and if you send out like a mass one, it gives you a report in analytics to. That's correct. Yeah. To, so you can see you have like a chart. You can you, you can see a chart of when when people open it, when they clicked on it, what they what they clicked on, and the actions they took after they clicked on it. Okay, well, if you're interested in that uh, <laughs> app, there there's so many available, but uh, that one's at yesware.com. Mm-hmm. Correct, yesware.com. Okay, and the next one is Hello Sign. Yeah, so Hello Sign is I think. Yeah, there's a lot of competitors out there like Echo Sign, there's DocuSign, DocuSign Right Signature. Hello Sign is just one that I guess is pretty. Uh, the pricing is pretty decent, so it's not too expensive, and and it essentially lets you create documents inside, and you can send it to a tenant or owner, and they can electronically sign a document. That's essentially what it is. Okay. Yeah. So I know that there has been some discussion as far as the Bureau of Real Estate and what they'll accept as far as electronic sign versus a physical signature right so i wouldn't recommend it for real estate contracts i don't know yeah I, and i think it really depends on the type of contracts you're sending out right? right so some some contracts obviously are legally well they don't allow electronic signatures right some do so but you know for leases i think you can use they accept electronic signatures for lease leases right that I, I'm not sure if mm. they do or not. I, that I don't think that that issues really come up. I know that the issues come up on real estate contracts. Yes, and leases are a real estate contract, whether people that realize that or not. They're a legal <laughs> binding contract. So I don't know that that would be uh, something you could use for that or not. I would, mm. I'd play it safe and, yeah. and get a physical signature. I'm not it. an attorney. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, neither am I. Disclaimer. But you know, when in doubt, you know, then I you're. Be prudent, I yeah. say. And but there are a lot of things you could use it for. Exactly. Well, even for like um, when you hire someone internally, you can use it as a contract, you know, to sign the employment contract, right? Right. Uh, and we use these tools for internal hires and contractors that we are vendors that we use as well. Yeah. yeah. I can see a lot of uses for it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, just very similar to some of the document signing, but you say that the the fees seem to be reasonable. Yeah, they're a little bit if you don't do a high volume, I think it's a bit cheaper than the other ones out there. But, you know, we, we use Right Signature as well um, and DocuSign. And they all do roughly the same thing. I don't even know how these how they price themselves um, because I don't use DocuSign. Right. I mean, I've had it. I've used it as far as when I had to sign something for someone else. Mm-hmm. But so, but I don't know how their pricing works. Is it like an annual thing or is it? Um, it's a software as a service. So it's a monthly or an annual subscription. I see. And I think depending on the plans you get, you can, I think it's between like, say, Twenty to a hundred dollars a month, and depending on how many, how much you do, and it the volume, the volume, and um, there's additional features as well. Once you get um, to the higher plans, and you can have permissioning, so only you know, your staff can only see X amount of contracts, and some like if you have a higher level of access, and you have more more templates available. Yeah, I could see someone with a, a lot of a company that with a lot of employee hire, mm-hmm. yes. you know, using it, um, or a lot of vendors when they use a lot of vendors. correct, yeah. yeah. Or even vendors using it. Definitely so. I think to, to sign yeah. off on a contract, you know, exactly. for work. Yeah, yeah, and we see a lot of that as well. So I think, like, um, maybe not specific to the real estate contracts, which I think it's a bit of a gray area, right? But right. I think there's a lot of other use cases in your business where you you just want to automate things and instead of pull, going to your filing cabinet and pulling up this contract, t- taking a photocopy, scanning it, everything is there. So it just, just saves you an hour a day, and you know, that's that's more than enough, I think. Yeah. I can see it being a time uh, time saver. Okay, and that's at hellosign.com. Correct. Mm. Okay. The next one we're going to talk about is followup.cc. CC. I know that's a very weird URL. So th- this this com- this came to me I think from a guy called Rishi. Uh, he, he, he so essentially when you have an email and this is how I this is my workflow. Right? I wake up in the morning and I have a ton of emails. I'm sure. Oh man, and I'm like, well, how do I? Which one do sort I respond them. to? Sort well, sort to, and and if if I don't respond to them immediately, I forget about them. Mm-hmm. So what I do is, what what I wanted was a way to sort of snooze essentially. 
So with followup.cc, what you can do is when you get an email come in, you send it to followup.cc as an email, but you in the beginning of the email address, you say two hours, for example, two hours at followup.cc. And in two, two hours time, it'll ping you again. It'll send that same email. It'll send it back to you? Yeah. Basically? Yeah. Yeah. And you can do two hours a day, four weeks or whatever you want. Oh, well, I could see that coming in handy yeah, because exactly. you've got an email. And I, I do that. Sometimes I, I leave an email on there because I know I have to address it, but not, but I can't address it for another it, two days exactly. because I'm waiting for something else to come in. Yeah. Or, or your mind's just busy, right? You don't want to have well, to think yeah, about it. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that really helps with that um, aspect of things. I, I just go, you know, tell, ping, ping me in two, two hours when I'm um, more awake. <laughs> yeah. For, for example, if I'm... If I need to answer a client on a large project that we've got going on at the mm-hmm. property, but I'm waiting for the bids to come in, so right. I can't answer them right away. So I've got to like set that email aside mm-hmm. until I've got the the bids that I can you know copy and re- and send to them. Yeah, that, exactly. That's that's what you would use it for. Oh, I see. That is a weird. I've never seen that before. <laughs> as far as email addresses, follow up dot cc. And that's new to me. Well, at this point, we're going to take a short break and we will be right back. But I'm talking to uh, Jindo Lee with Happy Inspector. And we're talking about the apps that are available, not just for business owners and property managers, but also some for individuals. We'll be right back. You've heard that becoming a landlord just got easier with Rental Housing Network, the resource center for rental owners and property managers. Get the latest industry updates, access online forms, notices, run credit reports, and take classes to stay current on rental responsibilities. Even list your properties online for free. Come to their networking night to meet other property managers, also roofers to clean up companies every second Tuesday of the month. Go to rentalhousingnetwork.com. That's rentalhousingnetwork.com. The best way to protect your housing investments. Welcome back. This is Rental Housing Network, and I'm talking to Jindo Lee with Happy Inspector. And we were just talking about followup.cc. And at the break, you said you thought of something that you could add to that. Yeah, well, I I think what I wanted to sort of add was with followup.cc, you can um, not only just add a reminder to to action the email again, but you can add um, little things like adding attachments. So, you know, like for example, you can attach and invite other people into the workflow of that email as well. And I thought oh. that, that that's pretty cool. Oh, I see. Like, so you can, okay. So you can share follow-ups. C- yeah, you can, with sh- you can share follow-ups as well and invite other people to be part of that follow-up. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty handy because sometimes you're like, oh, I, I don't want to action this, but I know I need three other people to help me with this email. Um, that's what you can essentially do as well. Well, and sometimes somebody else can can answer that email better than you. Exactly. You yeah. know, someone on your team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that would come in handy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. The next app we're going to talk about is Pick Marker. That's yeah. how you, that's how you say it, right? Mm-hmm. They're missing a letter. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's Pick Marker. P I C M A R K R. And that adds custom watermarks to your pictures. Yeah, so the way this sort of came about was we had some customers that essentially was asking us, hey, um, we, we, we've been putting our photos on Craigslist, but people have been stealing our photos, right? Mm-hmm. And we're like, well, why don't you watermark them? And they're like, how? I'm like, oh, okay, let me just find What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, how do you watermark it? I don't know how to use Photoshop. And I said, well, there's a few software out, um, on the market that you can use, and this is one of them. It's a free uh, app you can use which essentially lets you put a watermark of, say, your logo onto your, fo- your, your photographs. And it's, yeah. kind of, it's kind of shaded in there, but doesn't detract from, the, no, from no. the picture, but you can see it in there and you know that that belongs to whoever. Yeah, ex- exactly, yeah. And, so, and what you can do in this website is you can upload a, a bunch of, of photos and you can bulk um, add the watermarks to them. And what it does is it just saves a version of that and then you can upload it to the, um, as an attachment to the listing. You know what the problem is with that? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Our ads get scammed all the time. Yeah. All the time. You know, they show up on Craigslist for $1,000 less than <laughs> we're running it for. And one of my fellow property managers, his, um, I remember his ad getting scammed. Mm-hmm. And his pictures were watermarked. Right. And this, the scammed ad had the watermark pictures on it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. 
So because it's a scam, mm-hmm. the people don't know who they're, you know, who's on the other side of that yeah. ad. So it didn't help as far as keeping them from scamming. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I think it's more so much. Uh, it's more the case where someone just takes your f- f- photographs and you reuse it on another website, right? So I think it, what what we do see is uh, some of our customers have their logo as well as some additional information like the the name of the property manager that that put it up. Um, I don't know if that really helps. The well, that's scam. not going to help on no. scamming. But I could see where, yes, it would help on mm. as far as someone taking your photos and putting it on their website. Exactly, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, maybe they wouldn't. Yeah, I, I agree. It wouldn't help with scamming. <laughs> yeah, because the scammer is pretending to be you anyway. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and if they want to scam, they'll find. Um, they'll find They're professionals, all right? <laughs> oh, they're getting better all the time, yes. <laughs> okay, so that is, I mean, that's a free. It's a free free application. So most of uh, most of these software that I've sort of been talking about are either free or very cheap. <laughs> so that's what I've sort of kept in mind when I was putting this presentation together is um, low cost ways. Lo- low cost ways to just improve your efficiency times ten. <laughs> oh yeah, well that's yeah. nice that, that that's a free and I'm sure that there's uh, some of these I think that probably they start out there there are low cost for basic. Mm-hmm. Um, service, yep. and then if you want to expand, you, you, th- you, you pay. pay more. Exactly, yep. right? And that's that's just business. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's PickMarker. It's PickMarker dot com, but again, there's no e in marker, so it's p i c m a r k r dot com. Yes. Okay. The next one is called One Password. Yeah. So this. This sort of comes from the problem of do you have you know you have a lot of passwords right? Yes. Can you remember them all? No. Me too. <laughs> so uh, what it is there's it's a piece of software which essentially lets you remember all your passwords. I was I was looking at the site mm-hmm. uh, because in preparing for the show, I saw that it's like putting you put them all in a vault yes. and you only have to remember one password. Is that right? Yes. Hence it's called one password. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um so what it is you have a vault and it's um you have your you know encrypted password for that one. Once you open it it stores every single password that you ever need. Um it also you can store things like your your bank account details, like your credit card uh, login I use it to store like, my passport details. You probably store your pin, your pin uh, Every, numbers. Everything, yeah. There. Yeah, and probably shouldn't be telling everyone because everyone took my computer and broke into it. I'll be in trouble. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it, it essentially lets you remember everything. And when you go on a website, you can use one password to to fill in all the the login details as well. All right. So Let, let's say, for example, you go on eBay, and you're like, I can't remember my eBay password. Well, if you log into one password, it will automatically sign you into eBay. Yes, it, yeah. I, I, without the without the PowerPoint, it, it's yes. kind of hard to describe. But, exactly, <laughs> but it does put. I have like a drop down list, mm-hmm. and you can organize it. You can organize it, and what it does is it actually knows when you go to a, a website, it knows what website you're on, and then it will say, "Hey, th- these are the passwords for that website." Right, it recognizes the website. Yeah, and you just click on it, and it just logs you in. Yes. So that, I think, is a really nifty app because um, I could see using using that because, like you say, you have all these different passwords. And, of course, you know, some require, you know... Ten digits, alpha, lowercase, uppercase, num- numerals and... Yes, and, exactly. Yeah. So there's no way you can remember all your passwords that <laughs> you're Def- going require. Yeah. And so. I can't remember my name sometimes, so I think this <laughs> this definitely helps me. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I think that that's uh, something I should look into because I'd like to get it all down to one password and yeah. get it organized. And, yeah. <laughs> that's a bit of a long... That's a long, URL. yeah. I think if you search for one, like the number one, number password, one password on, on Google, you'll find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it kind of does have a long... Um, a long <laughs> URL. <laughs> yeah, URL. Um, the other thing as well with one password, there's another company we use called My One Login. Mm-hmm. And what that does, it does the same thing except company-wide. Right, so if you have staff that comes in and you know for some reason you have to let them go, you don't have to like change all your passwords. You just use my one login and you just forbi- like um, essentially just stop their access to it. Oh, that's interesting. That's that's really handy for us because um, you know sometimes people leave or whatever it is, and there's very sensitive information that you don't want to share. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can just disable their access. Oh, that's a nice feature. Yeah, so that's yeah. called myonelogin.com. Yeah, that mm-hmm. wasn't on the list, so no. that's good to know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because you kind of have to change the locks or the 
it, logins. Yeah, change all case. your doors instead of your your, your keys. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That's a bad analogy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. The next one is called Basecamp. So tell me yeah. about Basecamp. So this one's going to be a little bit um, might not be as a, uh, might not be as relevant as the other ones. All right. So what Basecamp is? It's a software that helps you to project manage anything. Yeah, I could see developers using this mm -hmm. or anyone who does a lot of construction or remodeling. E exactly. That kind yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. If you have, I guess if you have any kind of project based work, yes. right, and you want to sort of keep it separate from everything else in your daily operations, then you could use Basecamp as a way to get all your users to congregate in one online virtual area and just keep the, the communication thread between um, everyone sort of. Right. Relevant. This is this is for projects that are team, team projects. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that are shared and so that everyone can communicate. But just you know, it's one location that you go to to communicate about that project. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I've used it in a few different ways. One at work and one in sort of my my property. So for my properties, I'll maybe explain that. We were doing a um, rehab or renovation, mm -hmm. um, and the property manager was like, "Hey, I." I have a lot of things I need to <laughs> essentially get your approval on, right? And so emails was a really bad way to do it because they'll send me three emails and I'm like, oh, I haven't, I've actioned two of them and not the other one. So we used Basecamp and she essentially just um, put a, a checklist of things that I needed to action. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of um, communicated on each point with her in Basecamp. So you can, it's like Facebook messaging where you can message each other, um, but it remembers a, histor a history of everything and what, what it's in regards to. Yeah. Right. So I think it was like a three month sort of re renovation project, but we put everything in there and we had a, 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 and we invited the vendors and the contractors in as well. So everyone was on the same page. Yeah. Cause if I had that in email, then I would have to, to, you know, like a weeks later, you're still working on this project, right? So you've got to search your emails for those emails that came from that person yeah. to go back and, and review what you've done so far mm -hmm. or what you still and need to do. And it's a mess, right? Yes. It's yeah. a mess. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I could see this being valuable to anyone who has a team project Correct, going. Yeah. And internally, what we use it for is, um, let me give you an example. So we had an issue with uh, customer satisfaction, right? So we had some customers, when they would sign up, they wouldn't get um, the right love or attention that we, we normally give. So we're going, how do we improve this process for the organization? So we had a team of three or four of us that we, we essentially created a project around customer satisfaction. And we sort of put in our ideas on how we can improve it and then sort of vote against the ideas and essentially have a 60-day um, you know, plan on how we're going to action. And sort of we just use this as a way to collaborate mm -hmm. and sort of put all our learnings and lessons in there. So um, that's how, you know, if, if you want to sort of take that idea onto maybe in, in property management, for example, you might have an, an operational aspect you want to improve in the business. Well, anytime you have a business, it's, it's like our website has mm -hmm. been... A, yes, a website would be right, a perfect there one. you go. Yes. Website <laughs> development and changes to the website down the line and that kind yeah. of thing. And that's, uh, that is a huge project. It is. And you're, so you're interacting with your web design people and mm -hmm. your programmers and, and, so, um, and other people in your company. Yeah. So I could, I could see this yeah. being uh, valuable in that respect. Yeah. yeah, actually, Basecamp. The reason why it started was for web designers. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> and that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're uh, that is at basecamp.com if you want to look that up. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna skip to where there's love. Okay. Uh, Happy Inspector. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which is your company, and now we know that you have the love for your customers. So. Uh, tell us about your company and what they provide. Sure. So on the sort of high level, what we do, we, we our company, what we do is we take pen and paper based inspection checklists and forms mm -hmm. and we put them onto smartphones and tablets. Mm -hmm. All right. So the, the problem is um, the way I sort of started was I actually love, I've been investing in property for 12, 13 years and I had property managers across um you know, well, Australia, US and the UK that manage my properties, but they were doing the inspections by, by hand. So it's all manually filled out. I couldn't even read the inspection reports that property managers give me. So we, we developed this app to take that onto a more digital way of doing things. Well, and I know that you can customize your app mm -hmm. according to the to the type of property, you know, bedrooms, baths, and and amenities, and that kind of thing, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, you can um, you can do any type of customization. It's a very I think it's the most customizable app 
in the market at the moment. Um, it's really flexible. And th- I think the most important thing, it's really easy to use, right? Like our, our customers are between 40 to 60 years old, right? And people with, with never used computers before. And they're like, wow, you're using an iPad. That's yes, amazing. Yes, we need help. <laughs> we need it simple. Yeah. Okay. So really quick, how do they reach Happy Inspector? Oh, you can come to our website, www.happyinspector.com. And that's happyinspector.com. And you can see what they, they're they offering as far as a mobile app inspection. Mm-hmm. So I want to thank you for being on the show today. Not a problem. It's been a pleasure. And next week, my guest will be Norma Pamplona with Umqua Bank. If you miss a show, you can catch us on YouTube or on our website under Media Gallery. Thanks for being with us. For more information about Rental Housing Network, go to rentalhousingnetwork.com. That's rentalhousingnetwork.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. The preceding has been a paid program for Rental Housing Network.